All right, what's up, traders? This is Taylor, and this is your weekly watch list for the week of March 14th. I just read a few minutes ago, Tom Brady is coming back. That is, uh, that's some good weekend news. The GOAT. The GOAT is back. But in terms of trading here, uh, I mean, listen, y'all, not much has changed. Not much has changed. Uh, we have bearish structure. We have bearish daily squeezes on the major indexes. I think ultimately they're going to fire short and take us into new lows here. It's going to be a busy week, though. Um, let me see. Is, is this monthly expiration? Yes, yeah, so we got monthly expiration this Friday. Um, quad witch expiration. And I do believe we are going to hear from uh, j Powell and the fellas, the Fed, at some point this week as well. Um, I believe on Wednesday. So Fed week and quad witch shall not be dull. Um, but in terms of structure, nothing changes here. Just one thing to understand about this market is, um, you know, these bear market bounces, these short squeezes, they're freaking brutal. Um, I mean, they're nasty. And even if you're not shorting, <laughs> like in the hole, so even if you're not the one getting squeezed, it's still not the most pleasant, uh, not the most pleasant thing to sit through. But it doesn't change the structure, um, and that's the most important thing for us as traders: structure. So you get that ridiculous uh, short squeeze here. But it just takes you to the 21 and you roll back over. And on Thursday, uh, or Friday rather, the S&P futures, the QQQ futures, they rally up here to the 21, get rejected. Um, so yeah, nothing changes. And there's three bearish daily squeezes here on the S&P 500, on the QQQ, the Dow Jones, the always exciting Dow Jones, and the small caps. So your four major indexes have bearish daily squeezes. And here's what I mean in terms of bearish. The histograms are negative. There's negatively stacked DMAs. Uh, there's red 10x bars, and you're under the 21. That's a bearish squeeze. It's basically like the complete opposite criteria um, of the 2020-2021 market, where all of those daily squeezes had positive histograms, they had stacked DMAs, all that good stuff. Um, so this is bearish. And then throw into the mix here, you have bearish three-day squeezes. There are bearish weekly squeezes. And it's not just the, uh, the small caps here. Right? Same thing goes to the S&P. Um, and interestingly enough here, as the futures open up officially, the weekly squeeze fires short. So yeah, I think there's more downside here. Just again, the key thing to keep in mind is you got to pick your spots wisely in terms of where you short this market. Because when we flush, I mean, these bounces back to the 21, they're just nasty. Like, they totally cream the shorts if you're getting short down here. So in terms of some support, for the S&Ps here, 4,200 is the first level to crack. If we can crack through 4,200, then I think we head back down to the recent low of 4,100. If we break through 4,100, I think you see the S&Ps at 4K. So we got to break through 42 first. Um, and yeah, we'll see how this week goes. Um, you know, these bounces up to the 21, that really, I think, is your best opportunity to get some shorts on. Um, so like over at Simpler, if you look at uh, the shorts that we've done over the last like month or so, you know, we've had two trades on um, Uber. We shorted it to 21. We take profits on the flush. We short the thing back here. Rinse and repeat. Uh, we shorted Comcast. So all these structures, right, they're really similar to the indexes. Bearish squeezes. But the key is you're not shorting down here. You short down there. Uh, you are the short squeeze. So we short Comcast near the 21. Uh, we shorted old Nike back up near the 21. Um, and last week we took profits on Snapchat and we took profits on Apple. And we're shorting Apple near the 21. I think a few of y'all were saying, uh, <laughs> what were y'all saying in the comments? Something along the lines of, uh, when I put out the video talking about the Apple short, a couple comments along the lines of, uh, the graveyard is filled with people who are short Apple. Well, was, uh, we're taking profits there last week. If that's what the graveyard looks like. I'm all for it. Um, but as we look at Apple here, yeah, I think you could come down to 150. Um, another name I want to take a quick look at here is Tesla. 
you know, Tesla's been under that daily 21 since like mid January. There's that bearish daily squeeze we're talking about. And there's a bearish uh, two day squeeze. There's a three day squeeze. Fire in short. And there's a weekly squeeze. So, with that kind of backdrop, um, you know, hanging out here under your daily 200, I think you could see Tesla back at 700. Now, easily, this bounces back to like 850 when you get those short squeezes. But in terms of structure, for Tesla, for Apple, um, for Amazon here. So they pull out the old, the oldest trick in the book. The old stock split. Oldest trick in the book. Um, so 20 for 1 stock split on, App, uh, on Amazon out of nowhere. Still looks like a short. Uh, get the sell signals, get the rejection at the 21, negatively stacked EMAs. Um, there's a 3 day squeeze firing. Well, about the fire short. And there's a weekly squeeze firing short. So it's not an Amazon thing. It's not a Tesla thing. It's not an Apple thing. Um, NVIDIA looks the same. AMD looks the same. A lot of uh, the quote-unquote favorites, they have this kind of structure because of the indexes. So heading into this coming week here, uh, we are long uh, in the simpler rooms. we got some EOG, which is energy oil. Um, so we're long EOG and we're long Devon. And we're long because you got good structure. You, know, you got buy signals, you got all the green lights over here. So we're going to continue working this game plan. Shorting bounces in bearish structure and bearish trend and getting long uh, bullish trend and bullish structure. So if you check out XLE um, and crude oil here, for now it continues to be uh, your best looking structure, your best looking trend. So names like Devon. Um, names like EOG, Chevron is, I mean, Chevron's like beast mode here. Check this out. Um, bear with me. I think there's some extra freeze here. Mid video. Um, but yeah, there's a great looking trend here. So obviously everything going on in the world, we're, uh, we're, we're paying the cost here at the pump. So as long as that's the case, we might as well. Try to make some of that money back uh, playing these energy setups. For the life of me, Thinkorswim is just freezing up here. Um, I don't want to call it a video there. But yeah, we're going to keep on buying dips and things like, uh, you know, this energy trend. There we go. I don't get a bail on the video. Oh, but keep on buying dips and bullish structure. Like, pretty much like we did all of last year. It's just that right now, that bullish uh, trend isn't in your Amazons, your semiconductors. You know, we can jump sector to sector. Uh, so check out the semis, SMH. Bearish daily squeeze. Check out uh, the industrials. Sell signals negatively stacked EMAs. Uh, there's healthcare here, XLV. Tough to say that's bullish. Um, there's the transports. Looking like a short. There's real estate. Eh, you know, there's XLK, but like I said, outside of energy. Everything's got sell signals. Everything has bearish daily squeezes. So we are long a few energy names, and we are short heading into next week. Um, the IWM got the bearish daily squeeze, um, but you got the big bad four hour here. So we're looking to see if this four hour squeeze can fire short, um, take us into a new low. It, it's going to be an interesting week, though. J Powell and the Fed, um, quad witch expiration. So, you know, anything is possible. And I think we've seen plenty of days here where, you know, you look at the market one minute and this thing's down 2%. And you look at the market like an hour later and we're flat. And then, you know, like an hour later we're up 2%. So a lot of back and forth. But the key is that whether you look at the IWM, um, you know, whether you look at the S&Ps, the Qs, the Dow, None of this back and forth, none of these violent short squeezes have changed the structure. We're not above the 21. We don't have positively stacked EMAs. We don't have you know positive histograms, green 10 next bars. So despite all the back and forth here, you know the ebbs and flows of a bearish market and a bearish trend, they're kind of unfolding right in front of our eyes. We flush from the 21. We rally back to the 21. We flush again. Trap the shorts, squeeze the uh, the sweet shit out of them, 
Rally back to the 21, flush again, trap the shorts, squeeze them out. It all kind of fits the bill. Um, it's fast and furious, and it's a bit nasty if you're short and you're, and you're, uh, you're sitting through that. But it is the ebbs and flows of a bearish market. So we're short the IWM, we are short Intel, and we got some long positions in energy and oil. Um, but in terms of a few potential trades this week, a um, few names we're going to watch. One name here, um, we're really Amazon and Tesla, to be uh, to be Franklin with you. I think Amazon, and just keep this in mind: you short Amazon, you short the S, uh, you short Tesla, Nvidia, AMD. Uh, is a general statement: you short anything. If the S and P's and the Q's rally. Your short's probably not going to work. As goes the market, goes the stocks. Um, so a short on Amazon works great if the S&Ps and the Qs take out the lows. Um, probably doesn't work if they do the opposite. But yeah, in terms of Amazon here, we kind of take that rule of thumb of the squeeze. Once it fires, it can give you about five to maybe eight weeks of momentum. We're only two weeks into the weekly squeeze firing a short. You got the big fella three-day coiling on up there. Like a sketchy looking snake. Uh, and then you got the daily. So stock split or nothing. Uh, you know. It's all textbook. Get way too oversold. Trap the, uh, trap the shorts. Squeeze them on out. Rally to the 21. Fail. Uh, it'll trade higher if the market does. But it does look like a short to me. Um, and looking at the weekly chart here. Again. Market dependent. I think we're, we uh. Dare I say it, I think you can see Amazon down to about 25 hundo. So we'll watch Amazon next week. We'll watch a little bit of Tesla. As a general statement, the easiest thing to short here would be the market. Um, the problem is, if you look at the SPY, we're not really getting any huge bounces here. They're big bounces, but in terms of on you know the uh, the cash index here, haven't had the opportunity to short it at the 21. Uh, since back here but i hope this is helpful y'all um not too much in terms of you know hey sell here buy here just more so trying to get you on the right side of this market which admittedly could change any minute but you know and, and we got a video and probably a webinar coming out here shortly in terms of uh you know the small account i'm trading and uh you know it's been a combination of trades i take in the options room uh the mastery trades that we did in my class uh, like a month ago, and then just trades that I'm doing on my own. Um, but last week in that smaller account, you know, on the Apple trade, uh, the Iron Condor, we did an Iron Condor in the options room. Uh, then a few trades on my own here. You know, pretty solid week. Uh, and again, I show you this to say, I don't really, uh, I don't jive with that narrative that a bearish market or a downtrend. Uh, you know, is it a swing trader's market or just, you know, that it's difficult to, uh, all around. I don't vibe with that. I think if you're focusing on the same ebbs and flows that you would focus on in a bullish market, it's not the most difficult thing to work through. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to short Apple when it's down like, you know, 5% on the day, that's probably pretty difficult. But if you take the structure... You wait for the reversion to the mean. Right? If you're just kind of moving about your business here in the same way you, that you were in that bullish trend, just now doing it in the opposite direction, I think uh, collectively here we're going to keep on making out just fine. But rest up tonight, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. For now, I think the path of least resistance is to the downside. The S&Ps here, we got to break 42 hundo to try to get that party going. Otherwise... As we discussed here, there can be some pretty significant bounces. They don't change structure, at least not for now, but they are nasty. Appreciate y'all watching. If you haven't already, go on ahead and subscribe. And uh, let me know down in the comments, what are you trading this week? Let me know uh, what you got for open positions and maybe one or two setups that you're watching. So put that in the comments. I'll check it out, get back to you, but I'll talk to you soon.